This is Pastor Dan, First Lines Church, and I am coming to you live from my front yard outside in the beautiful city of Raleigh, North Carolina. And I love the springtime. I love how the flowers grow and how the weeds are growing, but they're not as fast. But what I really like is I like working in my yard. I like working in the yard and seeing the progress and watching the beds get ready. And I like planting stuff in the side and having it grow and then bringing it out and planting it in my yard and having flowers come up and having all the colors. But I want to tell you that it is work. It's a lot of work. You have to dig here and dig there and plant this and plant that. And then you have to pull out all the weeds you don't want. It's work. And it satisfies me a lot, but I still... Well, I'm not completely satisfied because there's always more to do. In Isaiah 55, we read about how the prophet Isaiah is writing to Israel and he's telling them that they should chase something that solves their heart problem, not their labor problem. Sometimes we work for things so that it can solve what's broken inside of us when really what's broken inside of us are soul level things can only be solved by God and God's grace and mercy applied because of Jesus. But here in Isaiah 55, the prophet Isaiah is focusing Israel on what they should chase after. Something that would remedy the struggle they have in their soul, which is far more significant than the struggles we have in our life with our money or with our cars or with our garden or with our family or with our job or with our education. Listen to what he says. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come by and eat. Come by wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, Listen to me and eat what is good, and your soul will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me, hear me, that your soul may live. So he's talking about a few things. One, he's talking about people who thirst. He's also talking about people who have money and they spend their money. And I think he's using money here as a symbol of something else. I think it's, it's really that we spend our energy, we spend our heart's desires on things that are in our world that we think will satisfy us. And he's saying, why do you do that? If you thirst, why do you spend your energy on things that really don't ultimately satisfy? You know, the problem with every garden is weeds. When we get weeds, it, it makes the gardens look terrible. So we spend our time pulling weeds when we ought to spend our time enjoying the flowers. Well, he's saying here, sometimes you can spend so much time laboring, but you labor for things that aren't eternal. And only the things that are eternal are the things that will really satisfy that itch that's in your heart. He says, why spend money? Why spend your energy? Why spend your heart's resources on things that aren't bread? And your labor your physical resources on what doesn't ultimately satisfy. Instead, he says, listen, listen to me, eat what is good and your soul will delight in the richest affair. Give ear to my words, hear me that your soul may live. That's God's desire for them and it's God's desire for us that the souls that we have, the inner parts of us would live, be alive at the most greatest way Alive like Adam and Eve's soul was alive. Alive like the woman in John chapter 4 who was at the well. You remember, he said, Jesus said to her, can I have some of this water? She says, you don't have anything to draw the water from. And he said, I have a water that will, I can give you that you will never thirst again. I think that was a water that would quench her thirst and touch her in her soul in a place that would solve all the things that she was trying to fix with the outside coming in. The relationships she had, the money she had, the things she would buy, the place she would live, the job she would have. And really what she needed, she needed to be 
living in harmony with the God who made her. And she needed to open her heart so that God could reside in her and satisfy her heart and her soul. We're going to talk more about Isaiah 55 on Sunday. I hope you'll join us. Until then, this is Pastor Dan of First Lions Church from my front yard saying so long. First Lions Church is a great place to be.